why are we talking about the forms of AKG? Uh, so I think you used uh, calcium AKG? Yes. Yes, we did. But there's also arginine and I think there's also glutamate. Um, yeah. Well, the, I think arginine is the one that the, the kind of the bodybuilders take. So do you think there's any difference between the, the different salts in terms of bioavailability? Yes, then that, 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 this is now secondhand, and that's exactly what I've heard. Uh, and certainly we know that some, some forms penetrate cells, even in culture, more than others. And calcium AKG seems like an odd choice to some people that wouldn't necessarily be their first choice thinking about mm -hmm. human translation. Um, but it was the salt that we're using in worms. So you can see the, uh, the influence of the worm and all our thinking here is that this is the form that was proven to extend lifespan in, in the simple model organisms. So uh, putting off to the, the side, you know, the practicalities for humans, let's show what this, this does first. Right. Okay, so it was gas. And so when you put it, actually, so when you put it in the worm, the worm basically eats it. It doesn't kind of absorb it. Is that right? It, it... Yeah, that's right. So the, the, the worm um, has this uh, tough cuticle to, to protect it against the environment. And we think that most chemical compounds cannot penetrate that cuticle. So we rely on the worms actually eating the compound and they're, they're, they're being fed a diet of bacteria. And it's possible also that the bacteria take up the, 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 you know, whatever agent you're feeding them, then the worms eat the bacteria and that's how it gets into them. And then you've got the problem of now it's in the intestine. How does it get to the other tissues that might be important for aging? So you're really in the blind here in, in the worm experiments as to the tissue penetration. Does it get to the neurons? Does it get to the muscles? Um, and but we're beginning to think about ways to, to look at that. Um, but obviously, then when you move into the mouse, you can actually measure how, you know, changes in AKG levels in this tissue or that tissue. And so that, that's the big advantage of moving up the evil, evolutionary ladder, if you like. Right. Yes, I could see that. So how did you give them the AKG? Was it mixed in with food or in water or? It, 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 in, the, in the worm experiments, it's, it's on the agar plates it's mixed in with the food. In the mouse experiments, it's in the, the chow, the solid food that the animals are fed. And um, now, now for, for some compounds, for some agents, uh, that's not, that's not going to work. And you actually have to do some sort of injection. And, right. uh, and the, the problem with that for, for mice labs is that's expensive. That's a technician going in every day to inject an animal as opposed to just letting the mice eat the food. Right. So that does sound better. So did you, did you look at the AKG levels in the mice um, after you'd fed them? I mean, so, so how much confidence do you have that the AKG they ate actually got in into their tissue? Well, no, we, we mean very low confidence on tissues, uh, oh. high confidence that there was an increase in serum levels, you know, which right. at least you know, it, you hope that that means that other tissues are being bathed in, in the, you know, the intervention. And, and of course, all this is possible. I mean, there's no reason why we, we can't do these measures. Um, I mean, I, I, I felt like I, toward the, the point where we thought about publishing this paper, and everyone's faced with this, where there are, there are so many questions mm. about what, what really is the mechanism here? How is it really slowing aging? Where is it happening? Is it something in the brain, something in the liver, uh, something in the muscle? Um, you know, we, we did things like, like look at stem cells in the hair follicles, you know, because we saw this coat color difference and we saw differences there. We saw, we, 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 you know, we saw differences that were consistent with um, uh, the, the sort of melanocytes produ producing, you know, the appropriate response for, for coat color. So you can do things like that. But what we can't do is claim that melanocyte function is therefore, you know, increasing lifespan. And so you are faced, faced with a raft mm -hmm. of questions. And um, I, I think the argument we made to ourselves was, we don't know. We don't know anything at this point about the mechanism by which this is happening. We have lots of ideas. Some of them are probably not very good. Some of them might be okay. Um, and, and, and we, we will retreat back to the worm to try and get more information on the basic biology of this uh, in an aging context before going back into the mouse to answer these questions. So um, it's, it, it, it's tough uh, because every, everything seems potentially very, very interesting and you just have to find a way to make choices. Part of that is going into cell culture, of course. And this mm. is something that, that, that the Brian's lab is doing as well, is, is looking at the effects of AKG on fundamental processes in cell culture before going back to the mouse. Right. Yes. Yeah, that would be, that would be interesting. So, so if it makes uh, mice 
have darker skin, I have darker hair, then would it work for me? Maybe? I don't know. I don't Might, know. Be shot, huh? <laughs> Might be worth a shot. Might be worth a shot. Yeah, I'll play that. I'm, not, I'm thinking about it as well. Okay. <laughs> but so, but bodybuilders generally take the arginine, the arginine yeah. version. Yeah. yeah do, do you see any difference between? Well, we haven't we haven't done a head to head, and it is something that we can do di- directly in the worm. Right. So we'll, we'll probably will do that. Um, again, much more expensive to think about those studies in a mouse. Right. Um, it's a real challenge to overall the aging field is that the, the cost of doing these kind of experiments is almost prohibitive to people trying to repeat them. Mm. You know, I would, I would dearly love to open a journal and see that someone had seen similar things to ourselves or done the comparison. You just talked about the calcium arginine, you know, difference. That would be fantastic. But um, at the outset, people are going to be thinking that's a very expensive experiment to ask maybe a small incremental question about the forms of the, the AKG right. And, and maybe actually in the end, this is where human clinical studies can, can be m- more informative than, than the animal work, where you can do subgroups of people uh, with the appropriate measures on, on different forms, make, make, you know, make measures of serum levels and so on, and actually, actually get something um, that can be then tested in animals. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I, that is, that, yeah. I mean, so anyway, it's good that you published because that, <laughs> I, I think so. I think it's important to, to get even observational studies like this out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we had hints at mechanism with inflammation mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the, the reasons why the coat color could be preserved. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now everyone's looking at this and saying, well, what bit of this can I grab and test with my expertise? So, yeah, I, I obviously agree. <laughs> it's good that we got it out. <laughs> and, and actually, yeah. if, if you don't mind, I, I wouldn't mind mentioning something that I think is the most important part of this whole paper is the analysis as Azar did to show that with this frailty score, the animals are living healthier longer. And, and, that, and that's great, that's, that's great. But actually more important, what she did was this scale the frailty score to the absolute lifespan of each individual animal. Hmm. And when you do that, what you see is that the, the, the animals on the AKG diet are healthier for longer, but the period at which they're sick is compressed. So you're living longer, you're living healthier for longer, and essentially you're sicker for a shorter period of time. And I, I, I don't know why that happens. I don't right. think anyone can really explain to us why that's going on, but it's incredibly exciting because that's what you want in, a, in a, some sort of human intervention. You don't want something that, yes, it increases your health span, but then you're sick for 20 years. That, 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 not, that isn't desirable. Um, and, and we know with, with, again, going back to those very rare humans and the centenarians, there are many examples of people who are incredibly productive and healthy going into their 80s, going into their 90s, going into their 100s, and then they have a short period of sickness and, 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 they, and they pass away. And so that, that's almost the, the, the dream scenario, at least for now, for human longevity, is that we could compress morbidity that would result in massive reductions in healthcare costs. Mm. And, and it would also, at the same time, we would benefit from a longer life. And, and that's the hint that we see in this AKG study, that that is possible with, a, with an intervention that you can actually compress morbidity. And that, that, that was our main drive in getting this published to, to get that message out there that this is possible and people right. should be looking for it. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.